Um, please tell us a rare uh, Shangpa lineage story. Thank you. Okay. Um, the Shangpa lineage story. I will, I will just say it very briefly as possible because otherwise I cannot just, you know, I cannot finish the story in one, you know, the, I cannot finish the story of 1000 years of history, you know, so, so that's something I need to be clear from the beginning. So basically, the, how do I say, the, um, as everybody know that the, how do I say, that every tradition that we know that exists today, you know, we have a uh, Bumbo, Nyingma, Saja, Gaju, Gelu, and then we have a uh, we have a Chonang, and then they have you know, then we have a Shangpa lineage as well. Then there's a many tradition as well. Uh, so, but but the timeline is something that you need to understand, and, and that is the timeline is that you know the first religion of Tibet. Uh, was uh, Bumbo, you know, it's an old, old tradition. Mm, it's an olden tradition, it's part of the Tibetan history, but it's not a Buddhism, you know, it's a different tradition. And then there's a, you know, uh, in the time of the Sonsen Gambo, you know, and all, you know, during the seventh century, and then gradually there was, uh, you know, Guru Rinpoche and other masters from the Nalanda, you know, a university of that time and then invited all the different masters and some scholars I have been sent to India to learn and study and then also brought back and to to start, you know, to start all these different kind of studies and Buddhism Dharma practice and start building temples and so on and so forth. And then there's a, and then by the, you know, certain period of time, um, you know, like any empire in the history, if you know enough history about the different empire and the kings and queens in the, of the of the different century of the different you know countries of the past then you will understand you know the similarity you know like an example there is there always a uh, how do i say whenever there's an empire and then there's a you know the families and the kings and queens and emperor and then some of the emperor they prefer a buddhism and some of the emperor they prefer uh, older religion you know so so there was a time that you know it was very favorable to the Buddhism, you know, such emperor like the Sonsen Gambo and all. And then there was a time that you know such emperor was not favorable to the to the Buddhism at all. Uh, so due to that, you know, internal climate, you know, internal difficulties of all these political issues, and then uh, how do I say uh, the Buddhism? kind of dissolved over time and then during that time you know such as the Chungpo Nanjo Chungpo Nanjo you know he's from the central Tibet so he and him and such as Marpa Lotsawa Marpa Lotsawa Marpa Lotsawa is the founder of the uh, Gajuba lineage you know later on of course followed by Gambopa and Milareba but the one who brought that you know the, the lineage and the text and the practice and the translating everything in detail was a Marpa Lotsawa, you know. Marpa Lotsawa means a translator, a great translator. So Chungpa Nanjuro was also uh, like that, you know, a great Pandita and a translator and meditator and practitioner as well. So they happened to be around this, you know, similar time because, you know, as there was uh, no longer a main religion uh, due to the different emperor and the different uh, fragments of the different small kingdoms over time you know there is no such empire that exists over time you know the big empire always fragment into a different kind of division different kind of uh, region and so on and so forth it's bound to happen no matter in the diff no, no matter the different centuries uh, so there was you know they were in the era uh, or or the time or the century you can call it where there was a no, there was a, not a solid kingdom like the seventh century, and then Chungpo Nanjuro uh, and such as a great master Chungpo Nanjuro, he was also a Bumbo until his age of fifties in his late fifties, and then in his late fifties he went to India, and then he received the teachings from the abbot of the Bodhgaya uh, temple, 
and then he received teachings from the, the female enlightened beings such as Niguma and Sukhasiti, where he received all the six yogis of Niguma and the six yogis of Sukhasiti and the five jewels of Niguma as well. So these are the very special practice that is not allowed to be shared to the public for the seventh generation. So Chungpu Nanjo brought back all these great teachings and translate everything and put everything in text and put everything in order. And everything is prophesied such as, you know, the, the, the five jewels of Niguma. You know, the five jewels of Niguma of the Shangba tradition cannot be shared in public for the seventh generation. You know, all the other teachings can be shared, like uh, such as general, you know, teachings. You know, uh, but not the six yogis of Niguma, not the five jewels of Niguma of the Shangba tradition. And that lineage continued one to the next, you know, so you know, one master choosing the next lineage holder or the next successor, and then that continued over the generation. And then gradually the Niguma practice, the five jewels of Niguma practice became more, uh, how do I say, uh, a little bit more like uh, available, but at the same time cherished by many great different practitioners, whether they are coming from the different traditions, you know, or are simply ordinary practitioners. So, you know, so the Shampa tradition practice, how do I say, uh, was greatly uh, viewed and respected by the different traditions. Uh, and then, you know, like an example, uh, how do I say, uh, like an example, the one we know in our, you know, and many of you know the Gelugpa tradition, such as uh, many of the, uh, you know, how do I say, uh, you know, practice they are currently doing, it's all related with, uh, all originated from the Shamba tradition. It's not something separate. Like an example, anybody who does the white Siksa Mahakala, like an example, many people, they talk about the white Siksa Mahakala and they say, oh, this is white Siksa Mahakala, the deity of the wealth. But the white Siksa Mahakala is originated from the dark blue Siksa Mahakala it's the same as uh, it's the same as the twenty one green tara. You know, you you pick one of the tara and say that is you cannot say that is our tradition and that is not their tradition, whether you like it or not. It is part of the Shampa tradition. You know, so there's a you know, and many of the mm, the lineage holder of the Shampa tradition is mixed, uh, re regardless of different tradition. It's not something like only one tradition and one lineage master. You know, so the lineage of the Shampa is mixed with all the different realized masters. Some of there was a time that Taranatha was a great lineage holder, and then there was a time that the previous and the you know how do I say the different masters and the previous Kalarambashe they have been the lineage holders as well. And myself, I have this responsibility, which is you know given to me by our current you know Daisudu which which is my guru. For receiving the Shampa empowerment as well, and there's some other master which I received the Shampa empowerment as well, and which I've done the Shampa Threes retreat, and currently we are ongoing the Women Threes retreat as well, and we are going to continue with the men's retreat in Europe and also in North America and South America in the future. There has been already some, you know, some retreat lamas who completed the Threes retreat, men and women in Brazil, in America, in Canada and in France, you know, so, and there's other countries as well. So we are kind, we are going to continue to uh, the traditions of the Shampa lineage, you know, it, because the Shampa lineage is never known to be the, you know, how to say, a great institution. It's always known to be a great lineage uh, practitioner, practitioner's lineage, you know, so, so that's that. So I think I told you 1000 years of history, you know, in a few minutes.